Hey everybody, it's your old pal Chuck, and I really am excited to bring today's review to you because we're taking a look at from the common writer Geats line. This is the Revolve Change figure. Yes, I nailed that name. Basically, every common writer series has a basic figure assortment that, while actually of good quality, is where the gimmick of the series comes in. And for Geats, it's the Revolve Change line. Now, I would love to have some umbrella name that's universal, but I can understand why they break it up like this, because Revolve Change really describes um, the gimmick, where with the toys, you're going to be, there is a change, transformation, but there's also, you're, you're rotating. I don't know how it's shown in the show, since I haven't been able to see any of the episodes, but... Let me just tell you right now, this right here has the lead to be um, Toy of the Year for me. It's fun. It's you, This is a fun figure that has 40 points of articulation. We'll get into that a little bit more. And you're really not missing out on much. Now, we're starting off with how the figure comes out of the box. And the reason we're doing that is... Uh, a few years ago, Bandai, with I guess most of their toy lines, um, decided to stop including paper uh, instructions. I don't know if it's an environmental thing or just a, you know, uh, cost type of issue. Regardless, um, to be able to get the instructions, you have to scan a QR code. Now... Um, that's well and good, and the instructions are quite clear, even if you don't speak Japanese. But I'm thinking about years down the road, you know, if somebody is buying this figure secondhand, um, will those instructions still be available? They're basically PDF files that you have to download. So I'm doing this as a way to show you how to get the figure to set out of the box. So... Um, starting off, we, we have the two halves of the figure. As you can see, there's two torsos. We'll explain that in a second. One is, this white one I know is the magnum, um, the magnum form. And that, I want to say, is either boost, speed, or a cell, or, or, or drive. I, I think drive is wrong because there was already a common rider drive and it didn't do well. So I think it's like, I think I want to say boost, like, like a speed boost. So it's Magnum Boost. And I think this is the main form that the writer does. Um, along in the packaging, you have its uh, main weapon thus far, the Magnum Shot 40X, which, unlike many other uh, weapons that are included with these basic figures, does maintain its transformation gimmick. So this is the um, uh, revolver form to the rifle form. Very nice. We'll get into that a little bit more later on. Um, we have its scarf, which apparently, before Geats, a lot of the riders did not have a scarf, which is a hallmark trademark of the common riders, or it was for a very long time. Well, it's back. And usually these are called the muffler. Because remember, uh, the common rider, it's like a, there's like a motor, overall motorcycle motif, riding and stuff like that. So, motorcycles have mufflers, like cars have mufflers. So, there's that. You know, so that's included. Nice little paint detail. And finally, there's the helmet. Now, I've heard a lot of complaints about this, that it doesn't really stay on. And I have to be honest with you, if you grab the head the wrong way, this can pop off. But it does have to be removable for the gimmick. So we'll get into the accessories a little bit more um, once we get things set up. So to start things off, like I said, this is how the figure comes out of the packaging. So what you want to do is bring the arms out to the side on both figures. And I'm going to follow the instructions, which means you're going to turn... Um, the boost, I'm going to call this the boost ver, uh, side, upside down while holding the magnum side. And as you can see, there are slots. There's like a, like a peg in a slot and a peg in a slot. And basically what's going to happen is the figure will sandwich together 
just like that. And there you have the full common Rider. Um, now, I should tell you that I've seen some um, other releases in this Revolve change line, namely the motorcycle. And it's going to come with a blank buck here. that So you can have, I think it's meant to have, so you just have the straight Magnum form or the straight boost form, if I'm using that term right. So, but it, but it will, so you'll be able to swap it out. And I'm sure as the show goes on, there will be other riders to cross combine and stuff like that. I mean, if you're familiar with the gimmick of the belt, you know it rotates, it's this and that. I think there's a lot going on there. I'm not buying it because, well, frankly, it's not going to fit me. And uh, to buy the, I, I don't even see the extenders that they usually sell uh, listed anywhere on Amazon Japan. Which, by the way, I, this is where I got the figure from, Amazon Japan. And I do recommend getting it from there. So, next step is you're going to come underneath, pull the head back, and you're going to, it's on this uh, bar here that you're going to swing all the way up. And again, there's a post and slot, post and slot. It's going to actually snap together into the back there and what you're going to do is tuck the head in and flip it up underneath so that head is now on the back of the figure next you're going to bring the arms straight down make sure that you get those little uh extended sections over that uh part that's on the inside and we're going to rotate towards us bringing these what were the chest panels out and moving them to now the side of the thigh and then next what we're going to do is come on down here and rotate this lower part of the leg well excuse me the, what was the arms now it's the leg forward that'll form the calf um, yeah yeah the calf and then flip the hands forward and they become feet and you have a deep knee bend. You actually have a little bend here that you're not supposed to use. And you have ball joints there in what were the wrists and now the ankles. Uh, let me adjust the camera ever so slightly as I get this to balance. It does stand very well. Just that my uh, display might be a little bumpy. And there we go. To finish this off, just bring the arms down to the side. Uh, and for those of you who are wondering, the figure is about uh, five and a half inches. I compared it to a Masters of the Universe figure, so there, there's that. And now just to finish it off, um, there's a slot right there that you're going to post the... Uh, scarf in or muffler if you want to use you want to use the proper term and just goes in like that and it hangs off the side there now the helmet there is a little nub right there that you're supposed to hook into the head and it does snap into place and holds but as i said before when um if you grab the head the wrong way to rotate it um it does have a chance to pop off. Now we're going to get to the, the, the weapon. And one thing I noticed, and I forgot to mention when I reviewed the role-playing toy, there is a clip here on the side for this to attach to the belt. Every picture I've seen of Geats, it holds the weapon right-handed. And in fact, it makes sense because the LEDs and the light are would be right there where the revolver section is. The, the, the cylinder that w would revolve around. It doesn't revolve on the toy, but it lights up. So that's where it would be. Um, but the storage is actually on the left side. And there's a nice little peg there. You can just uh, get that in, peg that into place. So I don't know if any of you have seen the show. Maybe you can explain to the rest of us what's going on. Does he pull it off with his left hand and then switch it over to the right? Does it is it like some sort of cross, um, uh, cross wielding type of deal that it just he, it cross draws? I mean, there is a um, hole on this side, but that's really for the other mode. 
but st staying with he right here with this um, ball joint double oops, excuse me ball double ball joints in the shoulders in the chest and in the shoulder uh, we saw over 90 degree bend swivel we we have that um, wrist articulation ball joint there you do have waist articulation um, no ab crutch or anything but that's kind of understandable ball joints in the hips and I, I do want to mention that on this mode you are supposed to angle these little exhausts out unfortunately there's no locking point so you will just knock them around uh, again 90 degree bend at the knee which we already saw we saw the swivels rotation so yeah there is quite a bit going on now to hold the weapon uh, you'll notice that the hand is molded a certain way and the grip is molded another way that really you do end up uh, needing to tilt the hand forward to get it into a what I would consider a normal shooting pose but that's fine that's great imagine having a, uh, a figure where uh, you couldn't do that so there's I mean there's a ball joint in the head uh, you do have these little tunfa bits that sl uh, flip out on each side of the arm I really don't know what that's for It'd be kind of cool if this is a common writer that has a tunfa weapon but yeah, any real uh, posability or weapon or pose you want to get it into, uh, it's there. So, uh, really cool. Um, what we'll do now, since we'll pause and we'll come back, uh, and I'll show you the transformation to the other mode. Okay, I've gone ahead and brought back, brought the figure back to what I would consider its neutral state. Uh, what you want to do now is bring the arms back up out to the side, uh, turn the figure over, yep, that's part of the gimmick, revolve change, um, and now below the waist here, we're going to go back and form the torso, so rotate this these sections back in, and this is my one little complaint right here. There's really no pegging in to hold it in place. I mean, the head does a good job, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, flip the feet out, and then rotate, rotate, and then go ahead and bring what, you know, what will be the arms down. Come along the back here and flip up uh, the, what will be the new head. There are slots here in the back that will peg in uh, to the, the well, I would say it would be the butt flap of the figure. That will hold the head into place. So you've got that. So now we come down to this side and detach the figure, the head from that side, bring it up, peg it into place. Bring it down just like that. So it's tucked in. So in a way, yes, the figure, depending on the mode, does have its head up its butt. You know, I will say it like that. Um, go ahead and bring the arms down so they're facing straight. Rotate them out. Uh, on. Just like so. Yeah, I think you have some new detailing down here, you know, the color-wise. Uh, and then rotate the sides of the leg out to form the calves and the legs. And bring the arms down and, you know, make sure they're kind of level. There we go. And then we just start adding the parts back. Uh, the slot for the muffler is still in the same spot, just you know, on, on the other figure now. Let's bring the head on. The, this could be the helmet. That'll just snap into place. And let's give it the weapon. 
And I guess you can say this is the Boost Magnum form. Again, it's a really the way the figure is done is brilliant because you don't really you have I mean you have our the full what I would say full articulation. This is I think the number of points of articulation is comparable to a SH figure art. Now I will mention that because of these side panels here, the outward leg movement is a little limited. So you gotta, you know, turn in a little to get it to clear, but it doesn't look that bad. Bring it down, you know, rotate. So, and you can do it on both sides. So there's, you know, you gotta play with it a little. Like I said uh, in the beginning, I think the Magnum Boost form, white on top, is the uh, the main form. I think, that, and this would probably be like the 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 main secondary form, and then there's going to be a whole bunch of other changes. Of course, you know, snap into the rifle mode and you know stuff like that. I mean, I've been I've been playing with this for a couple days, and anything I want it to do, I've been able to get it to do. So, yeah, I, I don't see any limitations to this. Um, like my, my two complaints, I wish there was some form of locking point on these exhaust pipes. Um, uh, and I wish that maybe this chest was done a little bit differently to make out because, because I mean, writer's got a kick and it's a little hard to do the writer kick. But other than that, I really have no issues with this. Like I said, this is on the this is a front runner for being toy of the year. I mean, I don't have a single transformer yet that I can say that. Um, so this is going to be a very interesting uh, holiday season coming up. Um, let's pause, and we'll come back with my final thoughts. Speaking of the rider kick, I. I had to try to recreate the pose from the back of the box. I think I did pretty good here, but this does show you the range of articulation that you can get, and this does have all the accessories on it, including the Magnum shot pegged into the side there. Um, again, fantastic figure. This is a front runner as, for Toy of the Year, and that's like the third time I've said that. That's how actually good I think this figure is. Um, definitely, if you're a fan of Common Rider get this figure. And if you're just a fan of new and innovative transformations, well, I don't want to say this is new because I think the whole rotating gimmick has been done before. Um, the way it's done here is a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to getting a couple of the other uh, sets with the blank bodies and, and the different bodies just to switch up the colors and stuff like that and uh, see what else they offer. Um, I know with these uh, gimmick figures from previous Common Rider lines, uh, you do they do tend to get a little bit fun. Um, so we'll see. Um, I'm definitely getting the motorcycle uh, that does transform into something like a dragon, which I think is kind of cool. And uh, I'm going to really make an effort to try and check out the series uh, as soon as I can, when it's like subtitled somewhere uh, that I can get it legally. But yeah, this is a great figure. This is really um, just everything you would want in a modern toy. Playability, articulation, non-intrusive gimmick. Um, you know, I'd love to see it. I mean, this could fit very well into Earthrise um, with some of the designs I've seen. I would love to see the, this brought forward, but yeah, I'm a little rambling now, so... I got this figure from Amazon Japan. It is available for pre-order off Big Bad Toy Store. Um, I do always recommend Amazon Japan because it's in stock now. They do have two different shipping options, slow and fast. The fast one uses DHL. I do recommend that since it's only a couple dollars more. Um, and you get better tracking. With the slower option, which is like EMCS or something, um, 
you really don't you have to go to the website to get tracking and then it gets handed off to FedEx and you know FedEx will schlop it across the country DHL much nicer flies directly from Japan into Cincinnati at least in my case so it works better well and uh, as of right now this will be our last look at the common writer Geats line until the next line of figures come out but uh, I know there's some role play weapons, but not really uh, feeling those. And I might get a couple of the other buckles just to try out. But yeah, definitely fun figure, and I'm looking forward to getting more. It's your old pal Chuck. If you like this review, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. That always helps with the um, algorithms of YouTube. Um, for Common Rider Geats, we will see you next time.